All right, so that'll take us to the last team of the show today. The Detroit Lions, who I actually thought had one of the picks of the first round. Um, really, I mean, the first two picks. What oh, they, the they, they, they traded up for their dude, too. They did, but they, I mean, and what a pick it was because the Lions this whole offseason we've been talking about. Another, another disgustingly annoying situation as an NFC North fan where the Lions are pretty complete across the board. That offense... You know, no holes on the offense, really. You could use another receiver. But then on defense, it was really the secondary that fell apart over the course of last season. And they've revamped that completely now with Carlton Davis Jr. coming in. And they trade up for Terry and Arnold. You see the number one or two cornerback in the draft fall. Detroit makes the move, I think, I believe from 29 up to 24. Like I, I was sitting, I'm sitting here on draft night going, you got to be kidding me. How the hell are they ending up with Terry and Arnold? And then they go and they get Ennis, Ennis Rakestraw Jr., the corner from Missouri, another guy that a lot of people thought is a top five corner in this class. And you blink your eyes and all of a sudden now it's a completely revamped Detroit secondary, along with Brian Branch in the sec- in, uh, at safety there. And now, I don't know, between Green Bay and Detroit, I think it's going to be a really fun race. We'll see how, many, how the, the rookies do in uh, Chicago and Minnesota. But I loved, absolutely loved what Detroit did in those first two picks. So I'm going to go down here to their... Uh... With the seven, is that seventh round with Christian Mahogany? I out of, out of Boston College. Is that round two ten? I have no idea what that so is. So pick two ten. Uh, let's just say a late pick. Uh, Christian Mahogany and I back at he came to visit Marist College for a weekend, and we went undefeated in Pong at a pregame. Really? Me and Christian Mahogany. Oh. So he was. Uh, <laughs> Thanks he, for the inside God. scouting, Jack. <laughs> and then uh, what was funny is is then I'll get back to actually you know talking about the analyzing stuff but with the terry and arnold pick my my good buddy who's a lions fan alex he placed a bet on on FanDuel that pick number 29 will be a corner really yeah because he's like lions are taking a corner for sure it's like plus like 105 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay he goes pick 29 will be a cornerback but he didn't bet the lions pick he bet pick uh, 29. well, t- so, well no one thought terry and arnold was going to be there 24. yes yes they they they, they traded up took a corner he got hyped then realized, shoot, it was the 29th pick. And then <laughs> Dallas went and drafted like a not a cornerback. Gotcha, gotcha. But yeah. uh no, but I mean, Arnold arguably uh one of the top corners in the in the, in the draft. And the Lions Daniel, needed it. Daniel Jeremiah too had uh Ennis Rakeshaw Jr. as the number 32 prospect. He had a groin injury. A lot of, a lot of the reasons people thought he might might have fallen in the draft. So for Detroit to get two guys, I mean, not just for for Jeremiah, not just top corner, but like Number 32, that's a first rounder right there. To get for two first round quality players at a position of need for Detroit. I I was I mean, impressed. You worry about the injury history of Ray. You do. That's you why do. he's there. You worry about the size. But I actually think the most maybe the most interesting pick in the entire NFL draft belongs to the Lions. And it's a player that, you know, even a lot of the media consensus big boards did not even have ranked. It's Giovanni Manu. I don't Oh yeah, yeah, no, no. We're looking at the picks. We we're, were trying. I was to guessing you were going to say the uh, Vaki out of Utah. No, I mean the thing about Manu that's so interesting is like he's an absolute nobody. He can't play football. Huge. He's really terrible at the position. Like I, I, he was second team All Canadian. The guy couldn't even be first team All Canadian in British Columbia. But I'll tell you what he is. He is an athlete. And at a certain point, when you get to get a guy who's six seven, who's three hundred fifty pounds, who can move incredibly well, even though, you know, even though he doesn't have any technique, he's never also never had real coaching. I have no idea who the head coach at British Columbia is, but surely it's not a great. I didn't know they have football I, I, I'm there. I'm surprised you don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, was, I was looking at UBC. I'm like, what the heck is that? Like some yeah, B- no, I thought I was like thinking of like UMBC, like oh Maryland, they've they've got one, but no, it's. But I'll tell you, like, if the the Lions have just said, like, we want guys we can develop, and they're thinking, you know, it's worked out well in the past. They've got a good offensive line. If Manu's able to hit his potential, he will be one of the best tackles in the NFL. Now, does he hit that potential? Almost certainly not. But when you're talking about a fourth <laughs> round pick, again, if this guy had gone to Alabama, he probably would have been a first rounder just because of the athletic ability. There's a lot to like about this pick. But but I'm also gonna- like. Oh, oh, there's a lot to like about that pick. I, I don't think I'm sorry, Jack. Go ahead. No, no, I'll I, let you finish this I, I feel like you can like kind of stink, but if you're playing on the line at six, eight, what, three fifty, like it's tough to be bad. 
I don't know. I mean, so these these defensive linemen are are so quick and, and so powerful. Yeah, you know how massive that is, though. Oh, it's huge! It's huge. I mean, that's, that's like a, the guy has any talent as a. As a like, I mean, this this guy, like he is. Besides, I watched. I actually went back and watched some game tape on this because I just want to know who the heck Couldn't this guy yourself. was. <laughs> and he's actually he's incredibly quick in space. But this showed up at his pro day testing, right? Like this guy ran a five six or a five point oh six forty yard dash. At six seven three fifty two, I blow his shuttle up. times would have been among the best at the entire combine. I, like I, he's good. Yeah. I look. I can't talk too much on Giovanni Manu personally. I haven't watched the tape on Giovanni Manu, but yeah, six eight three fifty is something that you, you, everyone turns their head and looks at that guy when he walks in the room. So if he has any sort of offensive talent or offensive line talent. Yeah, you're right. This guy, he could be good. It's always worth taking a gamble on these people late, later in the draft, in my opinion. But I'm sitting back here. Like, yeah, I'm looking right now at the Lions defensive depth chart for the season. And it, no one's really talking about the Lions offseason. But right now, I mean, they, what? They went and got, they got Reader. They got Davenport. They brought in Davis, Arnold. They just drafted Rakestraw. I mean, this Lions defense, for, for the problems they had, they've completely addressed it. I, we we put out a breakout clip recently on Detroit. I, I it's one of the better off seasons in the league, in my opinion. They shored up their guys on on the offensive side with uh, Amon Ra and uh, and Sewell. The, the the odds right now are Detroit plus one forty to win the North, Green Bay plus one eighty five, Bears plus three seventy, Vikings plus seven fifty. I mean, I think this division is just absolutely. Oh, well, you know where my value. Detroit's at. a problem. Like Detroit is a problem. Packers fans are in the comment section saying, "You guys, like, or a couple of them are saying, what are you talking about here? Like, really, Detroit? Hey, this is this is a really good football team. It's it's they're going to be a tough out. They're the Alabama Lions now. Yeah, your yeah, friend with, Alex, with your Terry. friend Alex has to be through the oh, he's, roof, he's through right? the roof. I mean, yeah. I mean, Terry and Arnold, uh, Brian Branch, Jameer Gibbs, Jamison Williams. This is the Alabama Lions. <laughs> it's nuts. So right now, all right, we'll end, we'll end, end with this. Given those odds right now, what's the best value pick in the NFC North to win the division? Well, I'll I say mean, it one more time. Lions plus 140, Packers plus 185, Bears plus 370, Vikings plus 750. Like Jack, I give you I give you 100 bucks. Where are you putting your money? Oh, 100? Yeah, I give you 100 bucks. Oh, the Vikings. <laughs> give me like oh, a... Jack the gamble. Give, like, give me like a thousand, the Packers. How about you, Ziggy? 100 bucks. Um, well, look, here's the thing. The Packers on the Lions. The Packers on the Bears. The Packers on the Vikings. They're not going to own us next year, like in two years when J.J. McCarthy's that guy. But next year, the Packers just seem to be peaking at the right time. They have a little more upside than the Lions. Plus 185 seems too good to be true. Oh, I think it's going to be like such a... I feel, uh, the Lions is the pick, actually. Everybody, I, everybody would take the pack. I think the Lions is probably the pick. I would also put... Oh, yeah. You know, I think the Lions are the pick right now. Plus 140. Man, it, it, I mean, the, the, that Packer Lion matchup this year is just going to be. If but, you give, but Ziggy is right. The Packers do seem to. But if you give me like 500 grand and say put on one of these teams, I put on the Lions. Well, yeah. I'm not, I'm, I don't want to bet any money on like. But that's the best team in the division. Yeah, I, I would probably. But best, who's the best quarterback in the division, though? Jared Goff. Ooh. All right, man. All right. Yeah. I would put it on. Uh, I would put it on Detroit too right now because I think their defense. I don't like Utah State QBs. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> now it comes out. <laughs> All right. So uh, so there you have it. Right, right now, me and Ziggy, me and Jack are betting on the Lions. Ziggy is taking the Packers. Um, Zach, do you care to weigh in here? Throw yourself on, Zach, one more time before we, before we get out of here. The Packers. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd pleaser. <laughs> All right, we will uh, we'll be back on Thursday with more from the show. Thanks again for uh, listening to the draft reaction. Good to have Jack back from Nashville alive. Ziggy back from Denver with a uh, you know after a rousing speech. People said that it rivaled some of the great ones in, in history. So hey, I you take that shirt off. Minute. Yeah, we got a text midway through. Take the that show. shirt off, Ziggy. Yeah, go Ziggy, odds you take your shirt off. <laughs> Completely ignored from <laughs> Professor Ziegler. How many views are that get? Millions, probably. Uh, millions. I mean, by, well, it'll be the Bachelor soon. No one wants to see that. One, yeah. one, that, that that's at 100K. That's at 100K. Yeah, at 100K, Ziggy goes shirtless. Okay. That, that's it right 200, there. 200K, you go pantsless, too. Well, I mean, no one would not. He, 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 he they will lose the yeah. channel. I can't. I can't wait for the the pre the promo for Ziggy on the Bachelor, and they just show Ziggy climbing into a hot tub. You know, he's got like just chilling out. I might be tempted to join him in that hot tub. <laughs> okay, let's let's get let's, let's end the show here. We'll see you on Thursday. Thanks for listening. <laughs>